Sarah Hoffman, 1979 Prophecy of a Coming Pandemic. After her suicide in 1979, Sarah Hoffman was sent back to Earth with a startling vision of the last days. The following is what she saw in her own words. This panoramic view of Earth came into view and then came closer and closer like I had been out into space and I was flying and was flying toward it. I knew this was to help me make my decision to go back to Earth to my terrible life because part of me wanted to go back to this beautiful spirit world or paradise and part of me felt the need to go back into my body and change my life. It was kind of a tug of war and what I was going to see was to help me understand what I would go through if I went back into my clay body. It played out again just like a videotape in fast forward motion and yet again I could assimilate and see everything clearly and perfectly. As the world zoomed up to me I saw the whole world and then the various countries. I don't know the countries of the world very well but as I looked at these lands I instinctively knew what countries they were. I was looking at the Middle East and watched as a missile flew from Libya and hit Israel with a big mushroom cloud. I knew that the missile was actually from Iran, but people from Iran had been hiding it in Libya and fired it. I knew that it was a nuclear bomb. Almost immediately, missiles started flying from one country to another, quickly spreading to all over the world. I saw, also saw that many nuclear explosions did not come from missiles, but from ground bombs of some kind. I knew that in the future there would be a nuclear war, war throughout the world and this is how it would start. Then my focus changed from the Middle East to America. I understood that I was about to see some of the things that would lead up to the nuclear holocaust that I had just witnessed. As I looked upon the continent of North America, I zeroed in on the East Coast and then to New York. I saw New York with all of its buildings and people. Then I saw some tall buildings crashing to the earth with tremendous smoke, debris, and dust everywhere. World Trade Towers, I saw a woman holding a little girl's hand running from the crashing buildings. The lady had long dark hair past her shoulders curled inward a little. She had on a beige business suit, high heels, I mean, heels of a slightly darker color, perhaps a tan color, no glasses. The little girl appeared to be about six to seven years old with short brown hair below the chin in a sort of page boy cut. They were holding hands and running together from falling, the falling buildings in the heavy smoke and dust and they were forced to let go of hands and thereby got separated. The little girl was terrified and I could hear the little girl screaming mommy mommy over again and again. I don't know if they lived or died. I can still see the face of the lady clearly and could identify her if I saw a picture or could describe her to an artist to draw her. I asked if an earthquake caused the buildings to fall down and the impression was no, but I don't know what caused them to fall. The next thing I, that I felt more than I saw was that shortly after this, there was no commerce, no shopping, buying, and was impressed that there was no economy, the co economy had almost failed completely and no one had any money. The next thing I saw was people being sick and dying. I saw this particularly in four cities, New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Salt Lake. The disease started by having white blisters, some the size of dimes appear on their hands, arms, and face. This quickly developed into white puffy sores and blisters. People would stumble about and fall, and then many died within a short time, maybe 24 hours. I also saw other people with blood coming from their nose, mouth, eyes, and ears. It started like a flu virus, and it spread very quickly, faster than any, faster than the other white blister disease. The people who had this disease died. Any disease died even faster. This was more widespread across the entire United States. There were hundreds of thousands of people stricken with these two diseases. I knew that the diseases in there were several different kinds, but at first primarily these two. 
came from small containers that had been brought into the United States. These containers were like quart jars, and I was impressed that the people carrying them would just drop them on the ground in large crowds of people, and the people would become infected without realizing it. In these cities, as the disease spread, the people tried to flee from the cities out to the countryside. There was a complete chaos in these cities and a breakdown of normal society. There was no electricity in them either, but I don't know why or how that came to be. There were cars piled up everywhere, blocking roadways, and most people then had to walk out with nothing. The disease started to spread beyond these initial cities. As these people were fleeing the cities, there were gangs attacking them and killing them. In the cities that were struck with the disease, there was complete chaos, looting, rioting, murder, murdering, a complete breakdown. Many people seemed to go absolutely crazy. I sensed that the electricity had failed everywhere and now and that nothing was running. There was no communication or anything anywhere in the country. Nothing worked. No radios or TVs. I watched people throw rocks and break windows to steal TVs, which I thought was really crazy because they wouldn't work. Immediately as I watched this happen in the United States, I jumped back to the Middle East and saw the same thing in Israel, the same sores, and I realized it was the same type of disease or sickness happening there. I knew somehow that whatever diseases had been used in the United States was also being used in Israel. This lasted for only an instant, and I was back in the United States. There was a tremendous long winter that lasted into summer. It caught everyone by surprise and started the full famine. Actually, I realized that the long winter actually just increased the famine greatly to its full measure because the famine had already been in progress because of the storms, droughts, floods, and other plagues that had been happening over the few years leading up to the long winter. It seemed that the year following the long winter was when everything started to go downhill very quickly or things piled up, one on top of the other without any breaks. The sense of time, though, was not very clear because I was seeing several things that seemed to happen all at the same time or very close together. During and after the long winter, the disease spread everywhere and increased in severity. The economy was completely gone and the electricity was also gone. There was a complete chaos and anarchy all over the United States. There was no government, just a total breakdown. There was no food at all. I saw people trying to get food and were completely panicked because no, there was no food. I saw people digging in the ground for worms and eating them because they were so hungry. Also, during this time, I became aware that there was very little water and that almost all of the water had become poisoned so that if a person drank the water, they would get the disease and die. Many did, even knowing that they would die because they were so thirsty. Some of the people seemed to go crazy and went around in gangs killing people just for the sake of killing. Others killed for food or for things, but the people who killed just to kill were absolutely terrible. They seemed like beasts, animals completely out of control as they raped, looted, burned, and butchered people. I saw them go into people's homes and drag families out who were hiding there and raped them and butchered them. There was such fear and hatred that come upon the people. Families, wives, husbands, loving ties no longer mattered. It became survival. Only husbands would kill their wives and children for food or water. Mothers would kill their children. It was absolutely horrible beyond description. The air seemed to be filled with smoke as many buildings and cities burned and no one put them out. As I looked upon the scene of chaos, destruction, and smoke, I noticed there were these little pockets of light scattered all over the United States. They were, I would guess, about 20 or 30 of them. I noticed that most of these places of light were in the western part of the United States with only three or four in the east. These places of light seemed to shine through the darkness, and I caught. These places of light seemed to shine through the darkness and caught my attention, so I con concentrated on them, asking, "What are these things?" I could see. I could then see that they were people who had gathered together, and they were on their knees, and they were praying. The light was coming from them, and I understood that it represented their goodness and love. I understood that they had gathered together for safety and that they 
cared more for each other than for themselves. Some of the groups were small with only a hundred people or so, but in other groups there were at what seemed several thousand. I realized that somehow many, if not most of these cities of light had been established just before the disease attack and that they were very organized. It was like they had known what was coming and had prepared for it. I didn't see who or what had organized them, but I saw many people struggling to get to them with nothing but what they could carry. These cities of light had food and were sharing their food with those who joined them in their groups. They were there was peace and safety in the groups. They were living in tents, all kinds of tents, many of which were just blankets and covering covering poles. I noticed that the gangs left these groups alone, choosing to pick on easier targets and unprotected people. They also preyed on the people who were trying to get to the cities of light. Many people in these cities of light had guns to defend themselves with, so the gangs left them alone, but it seemed that the gangs just didn't want to come against them. I realized that these cities of light, which is what I began to think of, were only for a short time and then the people in them would go somewhere else. However, I don't know where they went, but I seem to think they had gathered to the high places. As I was looking at the cities of light, I then saw missiles coming and hitting some cities and mushroom clouds started happening all over the United States. Some were from missiles that I knew came from Russia, and others were not from missiles, but were from bombs that were already in the United States. They were hidden in trucks and in cars and were exploded. I specifically saw Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and New York hit with bombs. New York was hit with a missile, but I think that Los Angeles was hit by a truck bomber, actually several, because I didn't see any missile. I also saw north of Salt Lake have a mushroom cloud, a small one, but no missile. In the darkness, I also saw little fireballs. I don't know if this happened just before or during the mushroom clouds, but there were millions falling everywhere. They were very hot of different sizes, with almost, with most about the size of a golf balls. As they fell from the sky, they left a streak of flame and smoke behind them. Whatever they touched, they started on fire. People, buildings, trees, grass, it doesn't. It didn't matter. I didn't ask what they were or where they came from because by this time I was getting sick of the whole scene and just, so I just observed and didn't ask many questions. Almost right on top of these mushroom clouds, I saw Russian troops invading the United States. I saw them parachuting in a, into a lot of places, primarily from the East Coast. I saw them parachute into Salt Lake City. I also saw Chinese troops invade from the west coast near Los Angeles. The people who were still alive started fighting them with their own guns. I didn't see any military. This was the nuclear war that I had seen earlier and I knew that it was also happening all over the world like I had seen previously. I did not see much of this war, war but I was impressed that it was not very long and that the Russians and Chinese lose, but I don't know exactly how. Now the smoke turned to a very thick, heavy, dark smoke, just as things appeared to be ba as bad as it could get. Then the earthquakes happened. This happened during the winter. It seemed that this was the winter following the very long one, and so the chaos had begun been almost for a full year. The earthquakes seemed to start in the west around Idaho and Wyoming and then quickly spread everywhere. I saw a hurt. I saw a huge earthquake strike Utah and then California. There were earthquakes all over California but were especially devastating in the Los Angeles and San Francisco areas. These earthquakes triggered volcanoes all over the west. They started spewing a tremendous amount of ash and smoke in the air, and the air became very dark and dirty. The sun was darkened even more because of the smoke and the ash that started raining down everywhere. I also saw a huge waves of water sweep over the west coast, and then I realized that it was happening all over coastal cities of the entire war world. Uh, Los Angeles 
was almost swept completely away. The waves were huge. I saw a big wall of water, taller than many of the buildings, perhaps as high as 20 feet, sweep over Salt Lake City. I thought this was strange because it was so far from the ocean, and I wondered how a wave from the ocean could travel all the way to Salt Lake City. I was impressed that it was not from the ocean, but from the ground. I quickly saw great cracks in the earth around Salt Lake City open up and water just shoot out of the ground. I felt that under the ground very deep there was a tremendous amount of water in the ground and the earthquakes forced it up to the surface. When the water swept over the city there weren't many there weren't very many buildings left. In fact there was a tremendous destruction with hardly anything left at all, just a few buildings. The water went from Idaho down to near Cedar City and was very bad. In the cities there was great destruction and most of the buildings had been destroyed and there was a lot of rubble. Though the earthquake, disease, floods, volcanoes, and tidal waves killed a lot of people, most people died because of the gangs and everyone killing each other, not from the terrible devastations. As I thought a, mo a moment about it, it seemed that the earth itself had become sickened at the terrible things that were happening upon it and was finally reacting. I was impressed that the earth wanted to cleanse itself of the terrible chaos and evil that had engulfed the people. Because of the volcanoes erupting everywhere, there was now ash mixed with heavy smoke. Ash was falling, and it was almost completely darkness everywhere. The diseases had become very bad. I saw people literally die on their feet. There was another disease I saw. People had these red blotches on them, and they quickly started bleeding everywhere from every opening. Then they literally disintegrated or melted into an unrecognizable masses of flesh and bones. I cannot even begin to describe what I saw. The dead were everywhere. After this terrible winter, I saw the survivors. I saw the survivors pick up the dead, pile up the dead into huge piles and burn them. The smell was absolutely terrible. I could smell it just a little and the smell itself would make you sick. The burning of the bodies had happened a little during the chaos but not much because people were so worried about surviving that they just ignored the dead. I then saw four more things. I saw a huge earthquake in the middle of the United States. It was tremendous and seemed to split the United States in half about where the Mississippi River is. The crack in the earth that resulted was huge and that area totally sank. It was miles wide. It opened up and the earth fell down. It seemed to swallow everything. Then water flowed in from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up to the Great Lakes, only there weren't lakes anymore because they all beca became all part of a big inland sea. I then saw a series of tremendous earthquakes all over the world, but it wasn't lots of separate earthquakes. It was all part of one huge gigantic earthquake that shook the entire earth because of this earthquake. Water came up on the land and all over the world. Huge walls of water along all the coast. This earthquake and the walls of water made the earlier ones seem small by comparison. I don't know if the earthquake that split the United States into two parts was part of this worldwide quake or not. I then saw a tremendous wind come upon the earth. As the wind hit, I saw people go into caves and into the cracks of rocks to escape it. It was tremendous, and it blew trees and everything away. It appeared to be stronger than any hurricane or tornado. It seemed like everything was blown away. I understood without asking that the great worldwide earthquake and the wind were somehow caused by a huge object like a planet or something that had come very close by the earth and disrupted everything, and that it was near the end that this happened. I was then back in space viewing the entire earth from a distance. I saw this huge fireball, two or three times bigger than the earth, approach the earth. It was extremely bright red and gold in color, and then engulfed the entire earth. When I saw this, because it was so different than any everything else I asked what it was. I was impressed that it was the burning of the earth that is described in the scriptures. I understood that just before it came Jesus had appeared to the earth 
and the good people that I had seen earlier had left the earth with him and were no longer on the earth. The only people left were the few wicked who had survived the devastation earlier, but there were not many. And that's the end of the vision. Okay, everybody. Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Now, if you stay here and you don't get saved and you would rather live in the world, you are going to face tremendous devastation. This vision is a firm reminder of what everybody will go through. If you, if you stick with the world, you're going to lose. If you turn your life, life over to Jesus Christ, repent of your sins, and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will be saved. It's up to you people. Worldly or Jesus Christ, make your choice. Worldly leads to hell. Jesus Christ leads to salvation in heaven for eternity. Thanks for watching.